quite often multiple times during the day during practical things he will stop you and tell you to do something else but it's you know it's, A lot of Christians only get that like once in a while, maybe once in a couple of weeks, once in a couple of months, uh, once in a month, something like that. But there is a, uh, a closeness and intimacy with God that you, you get where, <laughs> where he stops you from brushing your teeth and says, you know, do, do this instead. Um, where he'll tell you, no, don't wear that, wear this instead. But it, it's big things, small things, and everything in between. And quite often, the thing that he is saying to you to do is contrary to what is common knowledge or contrary to what the world says. Uh, and it's, it's a level of intimacy that needs to happen. And I think for everybody, It's got to happen multiple times a day. You got to get to that point where everything has him in it. And you'll know if he has it, he's in it, is when he gives you a suggestion and you take it for everything. He doesn't give the suggestion, then he feels like he cannot give you a suggestion. Jesus. Yeah. Um. The Holy Spirit is very, very soft and easily grieved. If you, even just once or twice, he gives you a suggestion, you don't take it, he will withdraw and not give you a suggestion for a very long time after that. Because uh, you will un un unintentionally grieve him. Uh, Jesus. There's, there's some Christians, even in this room, and those online, they like to do silly things. God tells them to do something or not do something, they want to do it anyway to see what would happen. Uh, I have never done that because I think it's stupidity. <laughs> but they, have, they, they do it like sort of like a teasing thing, and I don't think God likes it very much. It means you're untrustworthy. But, and then they're like, you know, we, we just, we want to test God. We want to see what it's like and what would happen if it doesn't. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's my thought. Because when you do it, he gets upset. And it's not a good upset, it's, it's a bad upset. Uh, sometimes he's hurt, sometimes he's angry. And, uh, you know, the more you take the suggestions from God, you can bargain with the suggestion, that's not a problem. Why can't I use this one? You told me not to use, why, why, why do I need to do this? And he'll give you an answer. Sometimes he won't, sometimes he will. Yeah, he doesn't need to give you an answer. Jesus. Father God. But if you've missed a suggestion before, either through, you know, curiosity or something else, or just because you dismissed it, not knowing you, you whenever he speaks, you, you'll know that it was him that suggested it. 
and the thought did not come from yourself, often because it is, it is absurd. Uh, when I say absurd, I mean it just doesn't, it's, it flies against common knowledge or flies against what you know to be right uh, or what you know to be correct. So if you've done that, you can, you can apologize to him now and rebuild. And the suggestion will come quickly, will come soon, hopefully before the end of today, even before the end of the service, it can happen. It happens real quickly. It doesn't have to be big. Sometimes it'll say, don't use that pen, use another one. But the, the trust is built through multiple small things. Um, and it layers up. And uh, the, the, the closer, every suggestion brings you closer to the perfect will of God. The vast majority of Christians, get this quote again, are living in permissible will and not the perfect will. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Let stillness be brought upon or everyone's spirit and soul right now. Let wholeness be returned. Let comfort be given to you. Thank you, Jesus. Build a, build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And more importantly, from my side, you know, learn to identify the voice. Learn to identify the voice. And no, his voice is not always gentle, and it's not always soft, and it's not always nice. The Holy Spirit is the one who killed Ananias and Sapphira. He is not soft, he is gentle. There's a difference. The Holy Spirit is the one who spoke through Paul and his aggression in his, in his writings, the, the directness in the writings is from the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. That was not Paul who was writing and saying, and, and, and just like you know, people were thinking it's him that he's being so aggressive and he's like this and he addresses and he says, no, this is by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. God is showing some people right now the times that he has nudged them into doing something, in saying something, and they did not do it. For quite a lot of you guys, he waits there right at the last time where he told you to do something, and you're still waiting.
cheese. Good cheese. Hey man, at least I think that's finished now. Oh my god. I'm just waiting. He's still talking to people. Let's get out of this corner. Thank you God. Hey Amen. You know, I'm over here trying to shorten services and God is over here extending them unnecessarily. <laughs> I think he doesn't like the fact that services are short because it means that you're only there for a short amount of time in the presence of God. Because he speaks to you in the silence, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Hey man, so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing. I'm just going to wait. It's not letting me speak anything just yet. Thank you, Chi. I promise you I'm not stalling, but there is something heavy that's coming upon certain people right now. Uh, you can feel it in your neck and your shoulders. It is real heavy. Most of the people... You will know it because it fell upon you like just a couple seconds ago. There is something it's, it's, it's sitting upon. It's not a yoke in that it's painful. It's, uh, it's a good heavy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is blessing certain people, I'm guessing. Thank you, Father God. falling upon people. Get Jesus. I release the angels of God to go. Thank you. 
uh, somebody is being healed of a, uh, what is that? It's like a migraine headache, but not in the direct forehead region. It's more of like a, it hurts more on this side of your temple instead of the front, but it does hurt over here as well. But it's mainly this right inside uh, part of your head, it's abnormally painful. Uh, you, and no one knows why it hurts. Uh, the doctors can't figure out why it's hurting. You are being healed of that now. Uh, I'm not sure if they think this or if it is this, but there's like a blood vessel that's ruptured. Uh, that's being healed now on the right hand side, right there on the side here. It's like a, um, it's like a ruptured blood vessel, something, 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 I don't know. Uh, it's not supposed to be bleeding, but it's being healed now. It's being healed and all the uh, hemorrhaging blood is gonna stop now. Good Jesus. It ruptured because of overwork. Even you, 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 you work without taking a day off. Have to take one day out. You didn't. Uh, and you work to the point that it caused physical pain. Uh, and you, you know, you pushed hard, and caused problems. And it would have killed you early if you weren't. I'm not sure if you're in here online, but you, if you, <laughs> you would have killed you if you weren't here. Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Perfect timing. Para this this go. Another person. Um, it's like a popping in the left ear. Um, it's not deafness. It's like a popping in the left ear. That's being healed now as well. Like, like uh, I don't know what that is, but it's like a. It's like an, <laughs> it's like a popping. The heart's being healed in the left ear as well. Uh, someone else, uh, it's not really a sore throat, but it's sort of like uh, something in your throat is irritation right inside, back right inside, this side. Um, it's, um, it's been there for a very long time and you know, the sprays and stuff are not helping. That's being healed now. Uh, it's, when you first got it, you thought it was like a sore throat from the flu or from something that was, you know, leaking down, uh, you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that, but that's being healed now. Jeez. Uh, somebody's vocal cords that were damaged permanently is being healed. Um, you shouted excessively for something. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but you shouted excessively for something. It caused permanent damage. Uh, uh, you, it caused permanent damage. You, you're, a, you're a female, and because it became sort of gruff, you became embarrassed about it. But... That's being healed as well. You Jesus. Somebody else separately from you has a damaged vocal cords due to drug, drug use. Drug, I think it's like, I'm think, pretty sure it's drug use and not cigarette use, but who knows, right? But uh, from smoking something. Uh, it damaged the vocal cords, that's being healed as well. 
it made it also very gruff. Thank you, Jesus. That's being healed as well. Somebody with um, in the nose, perpetual bleeding in the nose, bleeding all r random times, bleeding. You think it's medication, but even when you stop the medication, you would just suddenly start bleeding through there. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Bleeding through the nose. It's like um, a... <laughs> uh, the doctors think something rup like ruptured or something here by the bridge of the nose. And they think that's what's causing the continual bleeding. Jesus. That's being healed right now. And, but you think, <laughs> but you think it's, uh, it's because you ate moldy bread or something and you don't want to say anything. <laughs> Jesus. This one is unusual. There is somebody, oof, the neck. There's somebody uh, is being healed of parasites. Parasites. Um, parasite. It's not a. It's not like a worm. It's like parasites. I don't know what that. This got a cacklat. This got a kick. This got a kick. This got a kick. Parasitic infections. Uh, you're being healed of that right now in the name of Jesus. 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 There is another person. This one is crazy. There is another person watching, and the doctors have told you you have a brain tumor, but you know that's not right. Uh, it's it's uh, and you are correct. It's. It's parasites as well. This is a separate person. It's parasites. But I cut this karikikla, this koraka, this karikika, this korak. The left hand side here on the top, the left hand side. You think it's, uh, you, you, it's the doctors think it's a brain tumor. And from all the scans and all the uh, x ray, uh, I don't know, the, the, the scan thing is, you think it's a, they think it's, it's a brain tumor, but it's actually parasites. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, there's another person watching. You have, what is that? Um, gangrene. <laughs> gangrene on the right -hand side toe. Right inside leg, the, the big toe, something. And you are, uh, again, you're, also, you're terrified of them amputating the, the leg from the knee down. Jesus. 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 Hmm. Thank you for healing them right now in the name of Jesus. No amputation, no more gangrene. Thank you, Jesus. If somebody else needs healing or something like that, you know somebody, you can tell them to to connect to the live stream or something so that they can get their healing as well. There's some strange healings going on today, tonight. Hey, Jesus. Let them log on, they'll get something. I think God was, I, I think God was waiting for these people. 
iskarates kerkiagla tes korekia tes kariki tes korok tes kariket tes kerkiagla. Just waiting for them to show up before we continue. Iskarok tes kariken. One more person, the cartilage is degenerating. Uh, it's especially bad in your knees. Uh, degeneration. Uh, <laughs> the cartilage is degenerating. I don't know what you call that or what, uh, you know, what the doctors call that. But it's, it's all over your body, but it's really bad in the knees. Uh, it's like... Yeah, it's degenerating, almost like dissolving, that kind of a thing. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for healing the entire body, not just the knees. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cataracts, left and side eye, somebody else. Cataracts, left and side eye, going to fall off. Going to fall off. Cataracts on the left and side eye, it's going to fall off. Jesus. Complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. There's a few more healings, but I'm not allowed to say what they are just yet. I don't know why, but we'll have to talk about them later. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let all be well. Let all be whole. You have come to set the captives free. Right to the blind. This is like life-changing stuff to the people watching. <laughs> life-changing stuff. Uh, somebody else, you're, uh, <laughs> you're addicted, but it's not to something illegal. Um, what is it? It's not cigarettes. It's not alcohol. It's something else. Uh, and you're addicted to something, you, you know what it is, you're actually praying to God right now for uh, deliverance from it. And uh, you were like sort of embarrassed to talk about it because it's not a crime <laughs> and it's not like a common vice. You don't want me to say what it is, so it's okay. But it's like, um, uh, it's, it's actually quite bad, which is why you're asking for deliverance from it. Thank you, Lord God, for healing them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a, a, a another person, not, 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 not this person. There's another person who is addicted to caffeine, really addicted to caffeine. <laughs> uh, you've got like, uh, you drink like six or seven cups of tea a day. It's not coffee. 
because you are well aware tea gives you more caffeine than coffee. <laughs> so you drink strong tea. <laughs> Uh, the first five cups do nothing for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You drink multiple cups of tea a day. Thank you, Jesus, for healing them right now in the name of Jesus. You drink tea and tennis biscuits. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And yes, no one suspects anything. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God, for healing them right now in the name of Jesus. You got to have at least three cups a day or your head will hurt. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You heal all their diseases. You deliver them from all affliction. And you loose the captives from all bondage, including the bondage of addictions. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this is what this one is crazy. First time I'm praying for this one. Uh, there is somebody watching. You have, um, it's a shopping addiction. <laughs> But it's not like a funny shopping addiction. It's like a actual shopping addiction. Uh, and it's causing turmoil, not just to you and your finances, but also your family and those around you, those with you. Uh, you can't really be trusted to be left alone uh, because <laughs> you'll buy something. Uh, you, you, you may not just go to the store, you also do it online, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's caused a, a lot of pain. Uh, but it is uh, an actual shopaholic problem. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and you've, you've heard before all of the philosophical arguments, you know, the ones that are saying like, you're trying to buy your self-worth by buying things and stuff like this. And, it, and you're like, you know, you've tried that stuff. It's not working because it's, unfortunately, it is demonic. Lord God, thank you for delivering them right now in the name of Jesus. I release the angels of God to go and clear the spirit of demonic, uh, clear that area of demonic spirits. Release the angels of God to go and deliver the uh, person. It is, it, it is actually demonic. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this one is a good one. Somebody either here or online, is sewing for a white Cessna. A white Cessna. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is like the um, identification number on the outside of the plane or whether this is like letters for something else. Uh, but I can see the letters C-E-Y-297. I'm not sure if that's like the... Like the, 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 the um, you know, the, the, the plane's identification number, or that's another one, CEY297. Uh, it is fairly new. Um, it's, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it hasn't seen a lot of the skies, but it's, it's fairly new, but it has been used before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, thank you, Lord God. There's a, a also, a, this is specifically for people who are in the building. 
Uh, there is a... Uh, it's quite a few of you getting new cars this year. Jesus. Quite a few of you getting new cars this year. Some of you have sold for it and some of you have not sold for it. But there's quite a few of you receiving new cars this year. Thank you, Jesus. I think this is the last person right now, but there's somebody with uh, your teeth are being healed, teeth and gums being healed. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, especially someone on the, the bottom of the mouth uh, is, is being healed. Thank you, Jesus. There is it. <laughs> I'm trying to continue. I think there's a whole bunch of people who are pulling from me now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't understand this one, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, it's a six bedroom apartment, not a house. <laughs> it is huge. Uh, it's like a really upmarket apartment with six, six bedrooms in it, uh, in a city. And it's, it's in a skyscraper. I don't know how or why you want it, but um, maybe I don't know who you are, but it's, that's exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, the walls are white and gray, and parts of the, um, uh, parts of the house is uh, black. So the, the design is 80% white, 20%, uh, 80% white, 10% black, 10% this grayish, silverish color. Uh, it's um, huge. With the side of the apartment is glass. The whole one side of the lounge and the um, kitchen Lounge, kitchen, dining room is one piece big. And if the whole left side, uh, well, the, when you open the door, it's the front, but at the left side of the building, you open the door, the whole thing is glass. One side to the other, the panels are roughly two meters, uh, are roughly one and a half, 1.2 meters across, 2.2 meters uh, down, up, down. It is uh, square panels. There are what? There are 12 panels left to right. It is massive. Um, it overlooks a park. The staging of the apartment has, a, 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 it's like a brown leather couches. Uh, very similar to the, <laughs> very similar to the car, uh, the chair thing I'm sitting on, but it's like a, a very beautiful brown leather couch. It's very fl uh, tough leather. You know, it looks like a buffalo kind of a leather. Uh, it's uh, long, long, very long. Uh, it looks like a 12-seater C-shaped couch. The table in the center is a uh, glass table, two layers, two layers, rectangular, angled. Uh, the bottom layer has a uh, <laughs> the bottom layer has a, uh, a, a like a pot plant in it. It's gray with a green uh, looks like a um, succulent plant in it underneath. Uh, it is a there is a single gray fridge in the kitchen instead of a double fridge to match the design of the closet cupboards fitting shop fitting. Uh, this is beautiful. 
Uh, the granite that is on the kitchen table matches the rest of the house. It's gray and white, little, little flecks of black in it. Uh, everything is hyper monochromatic except for the couches, the succulents, and the uh, paintings, uh, or like modern art style of paintings. It's not classical paintings. No frames on the paintings. This is a really beautiful apartment. Thank you, Jesus. One point two meters glass across, two point two meters vertical. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, one last thing, there are bar stools uh, along the granite um, kitchen long granite slab in the kitchen. Uh, and the bar stools uh, is the, the leather on the seats match the leather on the uh, couches. This is like, <laughs> this is like billionaire status apartment thing going on here. This is a very, very expensive apartment. Thank you, Jesus. It's spectacular. Uh, the word you used when you walked into it is stunning. Thank you, Jesus. It is absolutely stunning. Thank you, Father God. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I release right now the blessing of God. I release right now the spirit of salvation, the spirit of prophecy. Thank you, Jesus. That is crazy. There is another person. <laughs> I really like this. I'm trying to close. There's this people asking, what about me? <laughs> what about my thing that I sold for? What about my house? So he's answering some of the questions, right? There's somebody. I'm not sure if you're in here or if you're watching online. Uh, it's... Um, it's not really a wood, it's not really a log cabin, wooden cabin thing, but it is like one of those uh, chalet things out in the woods. Uh, <laughs> it's got a thatch roof. Uh, it's got a thatch roof, very classic. Uh, really, really high thatch roof. Uh, uh, you know, the point, uh, you know, that kind of a, you, you, you really, really, really like those chalet holiday places in the mountains, and you want one of those kinds of things for your house. Uh, the, the walls are like the exposed brick kind of a things, but not like the small, uh, not face brick, like those big, like the big bricks. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> like those really, really large bricks, and it's got, te the wall is like textured because of the bricks, concrete in between, uh, fireplace, uh, thank you, Jesus. The bricks are sort of like that beige-ish, whitish color. Uh, big bricks, those kind of a things. It's very classy. It is very classy, but it is also um, like rustic looking because of the mountain, a, a, a chalet look to it. Uh, 
Parts of the floor are exposed concrete, smooth and exposed concrete. No, um, <laughs> no carpet, no nothing. You just like the smooth concrete thing. Uh, and you've got like plush carpets on parts of it, big plush carpets. Uh, yeah, you know, with the fireplace, the TV above the fireplace, there's a mantle between the fireplace and the TV to stop the heat from damaging it. Thank you, Jesus. The left and right and sides of the fireplace have wood storage units uh, that are shaped to match the rest of the, uh, <laughs> the house with that uh, rectangular, like squarish rectangular look to it. Uh, I can see that. <laughs> Uh, you, you, you understand because you're, you're listening. But it's, it's like a rectangle, but the top part, it's got like the little triangles on the top. So it's like a, uh, uh, like a pentagram sort of a thing. But it's, it's quite beautiful. But you, you keep the wood in there for the fireplace on the, in, in, the, in the center. Uh, like the previous one, the lounge and the kitchen are one piece. Uh, it's not like the apartment where it is long and rectangular. This is more of a squarish kind of a thing. Uh, so you've got the lounge on the right-hand side, the kitchen on the left, and in the back, you have the uh, living edge dining room table. It's a wooden living edge dining room table. It is really beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The table seats six people. It's not huge, but it is big. It is big. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it is three bedroom, two bathroom. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, just gonna... The person praying for this house has a white bucky. <laughs> I thought it was somebody, somebody else was praying for it, but I'm pretty sure the person praying for this place has a white bucky. Uh, it's not new. It's an older model, but it is very clean and very neat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, somebody else is being healed of colon cancer. Somebody else is being healed of colon cancer. Cancer of the colon, inoperable colon cancer. You will live and not die, but declare the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. They are healed completely. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, God, for all the gifts you're giving these people right now. That's the last one. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. There's, an, there's another one. Uh, 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 on the left side, kidney. Uh, not like defective, just uh, not working properly. Um, you, Jesus. Healing of the left side, kidney. Your right side kidney is completely fine. Thank you, Jesus. And it causes a lot of pain as well. Thank you, Jesus. I release the Spirit of God to heal everybody else as well. I release the angels of God to go out and fetch the healings, fetch the body parts from the storehouses in heaven to replace them. That is that which is broken. I release the angels of God to go and clean the atmosphere of everybody watching, the atmosphere of this room and everything everywhere else, and all the cars as well. Thank 
Jesus. Is <laughs> somebody else? You're you're a mechanic. You're a mechanic, and you've not had a job for a a long time. I'm seeing six months. You've not had a at least you've not had a real job in six months. Let's put it that way. Uh, you you are in desperate need of help right now. Whatever savings you have had has been exhausted. Jesus. Lord, I release the Spirit of God right now to help them right now and do the right thing, either fetch clients for them or assist them in, to move forward in, in doing things the right way. Maybe changing the tactics, I'm not sure, but Father God, you can see this person. Help them right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, breathe upon us. Spirit of God, give us your breath. This one is uh, uh, this one is different. There's uh, somebody watching. You uh, did. You did plastic surgery on your face, it's, and it didn't come out good. Uh, you are highly ashamed and highly uh, broken. Uh, uh, you know, you really thought it would make you look more beautiful, but actually it uh, didn't. Uh, you, you really, really hate yourself, hate, hate what you look like, rather. Uh, the Lord says he can heal you from that. You've been asking if he can heal you from that because you messed up yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you know, because of this whole thing, you know, your self-confidence has been broken and things like that. And the, Lord, the Lord says he, he can heal you from this. He can fix everything, put it back the way it was. Thank you, Jesus. God says you got to give it, give it to him. Give it to him and you'll, you'll put it right. And one day you'll wake up with your old face again. Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. That was that was a really big one for somebody. Thank you, Jesus. That was very, very important. Thank you, Jesus.
make you fall. Oh. Now I can make you cheat. Hey Amen. I think now, <laughs> I think we can continue now. Thank you, Jesus. That took, wow. Hey Amen. That one, wow. Go. Let me just give God praise for a couple of seconds. That was just amazing. Thank you, Jesus. We can, well, the good news is it's what I was planning to teach is really short, but I mean, like God just really wanted to touch some people, but the last one, I could sort of feel their heart. Um, and I highly doubt it's somebody in the room, but I could feel the, uh, the, um, the pain, the internal turmoil of the person. Uh, it's, it's rare uh, when you feel that sort of a thing. Uh, with somebody else, but the the amount of pain every time you would see themselves in the mirror was was intense, uh, and things like that. But you know that that's new. But Lord God, thank you for that. Uh, we're talking about angels, so don't worry. We're not going to go too long. I'm, I'll give you one or two pieces so that you guys can can put into action. We're talking about angels last week. We spoke about uh, that you need to activate angels, otherwise they do nothing. That we do not, uh, nobody in the Bible is taught by angels, otherwise it's wrong. As Peter and Paul said that. Uh, there are no female angels. We spoke about different kinds of angels. Uh, the first thing I'm going to speak about today is, uh, first misconception is, we, uh, we do not worship angels in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we do not worship angels in any way, shape, or form. And in the Bible, uh, when, when somebody worshipped an angel, including in the book of Revelation, which I'm trying to uh, get right now, uh, when, when they would fall to, uh, you know, uh, when somebody would fall to their knees and worship an angel, the correct angels, that means the good angels, <laughs> would say, uh, you know, get up. Don't worship me, uh, you know. Uh, and he would say it in a way that the um, uh, that God is watching, because we don't worship angels. Worshiping angels is actually a false religion, uh, which you'll find in the Bible. Uh, there was, uh, and some some people in the New Testament was actually doing this. They would worship angels as gods. We know that this was a problem uh, in the Old Testament with the fallen angels. But in the New Testament, people were still doing it, and uh, it was causing all sorts of trouble. We do not worship angels anyway, and all angels from God in the Bible, when this happens, the angels say, stop, don't worship me. And they would either say, give an offering to God, or make this, or worship God alone. That one is most famous. He would say, get up, worship God alone, don't worship me. And uh, it's, it, it's quite important. Uh, you will find, especially in New Age stores, they will have statues of angels. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, in New Age stores, you always find three things, right? And it all has to do with the same demon of, uh, uh, that same demon of false religion. You will find fairies, you will find gems and like gemstone things, and you will find angels, because it's all the same demon. Uh, those angel statues are not angels per se, but they are demons that impersonate angels and then tell you to worship them. Just like the fairies impersonate angels as well, and they, uh, they, they, they can impersonate female angels, things like that. Yeah, these, those are not angels from God. Those are demons. We do not worship them. Uh, the thing to do with the, <laughs> the crystals and stuff is they, the New Age people believe that you can catch energy inside them. Uh, it is demonic, obviously. Uh, it actually comes from uh, Lucifer who had all the gemstones inside of his wings. 
And the Bible said when the light came through his wings as he used to play in the presence of God, the light of God would come through it and the gemstones would flash different colors everywhere and different sounds would come out. And that's where you also get the wind chimes from. So that's where the gemstones, the ideology behind it comes from. But it's actually a demonic thing. Uh, and uh, thank you, Jesus. And there's something I want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's your Father God. There's one more section I want to talk about is that people, uh, and I, this one I want to put on the screen, which is why I'm checking for it quickly. I'm just seeing God tell me to speak about this quickly. Uh, uh, there are people, uh, thank you, Father God. That can, the Bible says in the New Testament, people that can appear as angels of light, but they are not actually angels of light. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Two Corinthians chapter uh, two Corinthians chapter eleven verse fourteen says, "And no wonder, Satan himself transformed." himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. There are, uh, uh, the, you have a, a passage of scripture, and you, you, you'll find this. In the New Testament, the apostles warn the people that a false minister can appear as if an angel. And you will find this often, uh, especially in Africa, but it's all over the world, but all over Africa, one of the, the, the demon spirits that come upon somebody, make them appear as if they are the ones doing the miracle. And uh, when this happens, the person who is possessed will sometimes use the name of Jesus but they will talk excessively about anointing. And they will talk excessively about spiritual concepts that are in the Bible, but not about Jesus specifically. Uh, they will often speak about the kingdom. They will often speak about the anointing. They will often speak about power. Uh, they will often speak about double portion. Uh, and they will speak about Elijah and Elisha. And they will often speak about mantle, uh, these kinds of things but they will give no glory to Christ about it. And they will speak about God, but not give glory to God. And uh, this spirit will, may, will, will, will come out of them when they pray for people. They will often work in water spirit kind of a things. That, in other words, they'll give them stuff to drink uh, to, to have them be healed, or they'll give them stuff to drink to be delivered. Uh, when they pray for people, the person can scream and fall down and stuff like that, but actually uh, it's a spirit, <laughs> uh, not just touching the person, but actually possessing them. So it's a very big thing in, South in, in Africa as a country. That's how that spirit works, it's a mermaid demon. Uh, and what happens is you can tell the spirit is upon somebody because they will identify the pastor or the minister who is doing this thing as being very powerful, and they will always give glory to the person and not to God. That's the easy way that you can tell it. And uh, they will also often charge for miracles. Uh, this, this was a really big one in South Africa. They would charge for prophecy, uh, and a lot of money, by the way. <laughs> uh, they would charge for prophecy. They will charge for blessings. Uh, one person in, in, in South Africa was charging for, it was like 5,000 rand to bless their wedding finger so that they can get married. Uh, one person called our office once uh, and they said, they, they, they said to mom, uh, how much do you charge for a prophecy? And mom is like, no, uh, we don't charge for prophecy. We'll give you one. And then the person was like, okay, I'll give you 5,000. Mom is like, no, we don't charge for prophecy. And the lady's like, okay, 7,000. And then Mo was like, no. And then this thing went up from seven, 10, eventually went to 20,000. And, uh, and mom is like, listen, you want a prophecy, I'll pray for you for free because freely given, freely received, right? Uh, and this is what's gonna happen. Freely received, freely given, I'll pray for you, you'll get it. And the lady was like shocked and confused. 
And she said, because these other pastors charged for it. And she said, those are false prophets. And you see this in the book of Acts, Simon, Simon the sorcerer, which wanted to pay for the Holy Spirit. It was a spirit of witchcraft that was upon him. Peter tells him, uh, you and your gift can perish forever. Because <laughs> he tries to buy the Holy Spirit. And because that's how that spirit works. But that spirit comes upon people. Uh, they, will, uh, they will appear as a minister of light. And you will find this in the Bible. The reason I'm talking about this is because certain translations will call them angels of light. The word for angel, the word for minister, the word for messenger, and the word uh, is the same word. Which is why you'll often see interchangeably God calls his ministers angels. He calls his angels ministers. Ministers of fire, angels of fire, same word. Pastor is also the same word. So ministers, angels, pastors, servants, all the same word. And being able to identify which one is which, it requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of understanding. So when it says here, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, no wonder Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. It is therefore no great thing that his ministers, that's also the word angels, his angels transform themselves into angels of righteousness. Or in another translation, I believe, it's, I believe it's the King James, I'm not, I'm not certain. One of them says, it's no great thing that his ministers transform themselves into angels of righteousness whose end will be according to their work. So he's warning people that when the spirit, which is a demonic spirit, comes upon people, they appear as if an angel. And then they can do certain works, but the end of it is wrong. Uh, one of the ways you will know somebody's operating in the in water spirit, like I told you, one, they will charge for stuff. Uh, two, uh, and, and yes, they are heavily involved with giving and gifts and things like that. Uh, one, uh, and fundraising, stuff like that. Number three, they are heavily involved with water spirits, giving people water and stuff to drink, or um, uh, t uh, sprinkling water on them, <laughs> uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, that same spirit, the people around them will say that this pastor or this apostle or this person is very powerful, but give no glory to God, uh, and, and things like that. Uh, and there's very little God involved, and... Uh, another one is the people that are prayed for often end up worse than they began. They are healed of the one disease that they had, but now they have another problem that's worse. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you see this often, they come for healing and things like that. They get healed of this problem, but now suddenly they have an addiction to alcohol and they can't understand where it came from, but they are 100% addicted and it crushes them. That spirit that often possesses them and makes them worse than before is the python spirit, which is why it's often uh, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, that sort of a thing, but it crushes their lives and it slowly, slowly strangles them from what they have. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, you, you, there's a lot more inside there, but I don't really want to get into it the, the, that's, that's the reason I wanted to explain this. We don't worship angels, and it is possible for people to come in the form of an angel, or in this verse here, it's possible for, for angels to come in the form of people as well, if you flip it over, <laughs> and uh, cause and teach them things, which is why Paul and Peter say, don't listen to an angel if they try to teach you, Right? It is, uh, it's, it's quite dangerous, right? Now, you can, if you want to learn more, uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> if you want to learn more about this, you can read this entire uh, uh, chapter for yourself. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. So we do not, we don't worship angels, and angels do not teach humans. Very, very big, very, very important. Uh, the last time that an angel accepted worship was with the fallen angels, which is why we believe that when a real angel comes, a godly angel, one from, from God, a servant of God comes, and uh, you try and worship them, they say, no, don't worship me, worship God alone, because all angels are 100% aware of what happened the first time. 
and that God himself grabbed them by the collar and put them into utter darkness forever. They all watched it, they all knew it, so they don't want to be involved or they don't want to be um, caught with that same thing again. Uh, because if, you know, they don't want to be involved with the other angels locked up in Tartarus, if this sort of thing's happened, God is watching, God knows, and God is going to judge in that manner. So in order to protect themselves, they say, Lord, I am not accepting this worship, worship God alone. Uh, we know angels themselves all worship God. Uh, Isaiah 6, 2 to 6 says that the seraphims, which have six wings, they worship God continually. It says here, verse 3, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Uh, this is incredible, especially for the last days uh, of, of, uh, of the world. Because, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because these same angels, uh, you could put in Revelation chapter 15, Revelation chapter 15, these angels that are close to God and the ones worshiping God are the ones that carry the judgment from the throne of God and give it to the other angels that administer it. So angel, uh, Revelation chapter 15 says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name and over the standing on the sea of glass having harps of God. Uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 3 says, They sing us the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just, just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Right? This is important because you cannot enter the presence of God without giving God worship. Even the angels have to give God worship when you enter the courts of heaven. When you enter the courts of heaven, you always give God praise and worship. He is the king. Right? It's kind of a disrespectful thing to just come up to God and say, Lord, help me with this. And you didn't give him praise. Lord, I need your help with this. Lord, do this. Lord, I need, I need provision. Lord, where's my house? Where's this? And you didn't give God praise. Even the angels have to give God praise before they enter his presence. Verse 4 says, Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? That's the, that's the, the bad Christians, right? <laughs> for you alone are holy, for all nations shall come by and worship before you, for your judgments have been made manifested. After these things, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. Right now, this is a very, 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 very special place. Uh, this place is only mentioned once, if I believe, in this chapter, in the entire Bible. It is a, 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 a building in heaven that is used solely for administering justice. Uh, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. The one thing that we know about this temple of the tabernacle, the testimony, is this is where the books of everyone's lives are kept. That means when, from the time you are born, God writes a book about you. Uh, King David says this. He says, the books of my testimony are kept in the tabernacle, right? And he says, the books that have every day of my life, all of the things I'm ever going to do that's written here, your entire life story is written in this book. It's kept in this room. And God, out of this room, administers justice. So all of everybody's lives that you ever did, and every, there's technically, I believe there's two books, right? I believe there's two books. There's one book that of the stuff you were supposed to do, and another book that's written of the stuff that you actually did. And uh, we know this because it's written about there's a scroll that everything you do is written in the scroll. And the people that write the scroll are the angels. They watch and they listen to everything that you're doing, everything you're saying. Zechariah, uh, not Zechariah, uh, Malachi speaks about it. He says, everything you say, everything you do, every time you act and every time you don't act and you were supposed to act gets written down in the scroll. So the angels are writing the scrolls about you. And, uh, you know, this seems kind of like betrayal, but it's not really betrayal. Uh, 
but the angels that write the scrolls about you are the ones assigned to you. So the ones that's following you and protecting you is also tattletailing about you to God. They are watching everything that you're doing and they're writing it down. And just like there are demons that write down everything that you're doing, trying to uh, attack you about it, those types of demons are called hateful birds or birds. Those uh, familiar spirits are writing things about you and uh, the angels are writing things about you. And they give a, 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 a report based upon what you did and how you said it, not just what you're doing here on earth between other people, but also between them, whether you could see them, whether you knew about them. They write this down. And uh, this is the next point. Angels are investigators. And we will, we will come back quickly over here, uh, back to the story, because what's written in this book, it, it, written in this room, is, uh, uh, is, is uh, thank you, Jesus. What's written in this book Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. What's written in this book is what uh, is 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 what it, what's written in this book. The judgment that God gives out is based upon the investigation that the angels have done. Let's put it that way. When the angels come to uh, to investigate. They sometimes come in a spiritual form, but they also come, thank you, Jesus. They also come in a physical form and they walk around to give this kind of a uh, 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 investigation, this kind of judgment, right? And I was going to read this now. I can feel God just explain this right now. In Genesis chapter 18, gives the story, uh, thank you, Jesus. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, God the Father, and it actually says, and his people, so we, we can assume either Jesus and the Holy Spirit are with him or there's angels with him, right? And it says here, for I've known in order that may command his children and also that I may keep the Lord to do righteous and uh, spoken to him, verse 19. Go to verse 20, verse 20. There we go. Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done according to the outcry that is against it that has come to me, and if not, I will know. He is going down physically. We know he went down physically because the angels went down physically. And you guys know the story of what happened when they go down. Uh, you, know, the, you know, when they come into the city and then this happened, that happened. And then uh, eventually they have to escape the city. And uh, the angels, uh, <laughs> uh, the next chapter explains, you know what happens. You know what, uh, you know, with these people, they try to, uh, uh, you know, to capture the angels to do wrong things against them. The angels release a power of God in verse in chapter 19, verse 11. They strike all of the perverted guys with blindness in order to escape. Now, how they strike them with blindness, I'm not sure, but multiple times in the Bible, in order to escape angels, blind people. We see this with uh, Saul. We see this uh, where, uh, in, uh, in the Old Testament as well. When the armies came against Israel, the angels blinded all of them. I think it's Elijah, Elisha, I think it's Elisha, sorry. Elisha, the angels blinded all the people. They all had to put each other's hands on each other's shoulders and, the, and they led them into captivity and then opened their eyes again. They said like, oh no, we've all been captured. <laughs> you know, which I think is kind of funny, right? But here we can see angels have this power. The ones that come down to investigate will strike with blindness and disappear or escape so that they have enough time. The next one says, Then the men said to the Lord, Have you anyone else here? Son-in-laws, daughters, whoever you have in the city, take them out of this place. This is a judgment that the angels are giving. 
So the angels are watching. Then the angels came, uh, these same angels that are watching came down physically in form, found out things are a lot worse than what people have been praying. And uh, when this happened, they are like, listen, we are going, and the next one says, we will destroy this place. The angels have decided. When he says we, he means heaven's armies. God the Father is going to drop fireballs on there. Uh, what I find incredible is when you go and research this area, they, uh, they find uh, in this area pottery that has been glazed. And, in the, and then they were like, okay, you know, it's glazed pottery, la, 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 la. And then the people were like, hold on, wait a second. Glazed pottery was only invented a lot later in life. And then they were like, what's going on here? And then they tested it. And one guy took a piece of pottery and he took it to America to be tested in one of those things. And then the guy was like, um, uh, he thought they had taken it from New Mexico and from certain areas. And they said, why did you think that we took this pottery from there? And the guy was like, no, you see, uh, we have lots of this pottery uh, because when we test nuclear weapons, <laughs> The explosion is so heavy, it causes this glazing, but only in one side instantly. So you must have gotten it from this area where we do testing. And then the guy is like, no, actually I took it from Sodom and Gomorrah. And the guy, well, and the, and the guy testing it was like, are you sure? Because this looks like every other, you know, rocks that are in this area. When this fireball comes down and it just destroys it, it gets glazed on one side and it creates this glass, pottery, whatever it is. And so we know that when this thing was, a, was blown up, it was like a literal fireball in an instant destroys this whole area. And so the angel says, we heaven, that is like, not specifically the angels, but we heaven are going to destroy this grace because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, right? And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. In other words, these angels are not just coming to investigate and coming to check the area out to see whether it's really that bad, but also they are the ones radioing heaven to call down the fire strike. That's why he says, we are the ones sent to destroy it. In other words, we have been sent to get you out. Once we are out, we will tell heaven and they will drop the bomb. So we have here a hierarchy in the army. You have angels that are investigative, that are like spies. You also have angels that, ca that are recording information. And you have angels that are sending commands back to heaven based upon intel back to heaven. This is like a military operation. Because the host of heaven is an army and you have this army with you all the time. They're always watching, they're always recording, and they're always uh, reporting back and telling them what to do. Uh, the next line says here, so Lot, uh, so Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-law who married his daughters and said, get up out of this place for the Lord will destroy the city. But his son-in-law uh, seemed to be joking, right? Because remember, these people don't believe that God is watching because they've been doing what they wanted. They believe... God is not watching. Uh, we know how perverted this place is because both all the daughters are all virgins, even though they are married to these guys. Uh, these guys doing things with other guys, right? Next slide. <laughs> the morning dawned. The angels hurried Lot, uh, urged Lot to hurry and uh, saying, arise, take your wife and your two children who are here. At least you be consumed in the punishment of the city. So they are well aware. They know the firestorm is coming in the morning. The angels themselves are not worried about themselves because they can, I, I'm pretty sure they can survive this or they'll just disappear or run away or whatever it is. But while they lingered, the men, that is the angels, took them by the hand. The angels are here physically grabbing them with their strength, had to pull them out of the city. That like, uh, you know, pastors are often saying like, you know, this shows how much they love the sin and stuff like that. But on this time and this occasion, this service, I want to show how strong these guys are. They pull them out there, uh, the hands of the Lord being merciful to him. 
God is willing with his strong hand to pull you out of destruction. And they brought them out of the city and set them outside the city. We know what happens. Uh, you know, the, the fire, it, you know, the, the, the fire comes down. The next one says, came to pass when they were outside, escape for your life. Come with me if you want to live, you know. <laughs> Don't look behind or stay anywhere in the plane. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. In other words, the blast is going to be intense. Only in the mountains will you survive. Uh, and then, uh, 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 <laughs> and then Lot said to them, "Please know, my lords, uh, and uh, indeed your servant has found favor, but it's a bit too late now." Uh, and he's like, "I can't really escape, Dick. I mean, uh, you know, like what? <laughs> uh, I find this like just crazy. These angels are trying to save them so much, telling them that there is a bomb going to explode, and this guy's argument is." Uh, if I go to the mountains, I'll die anyway. There's nothing there. Let me stay. <laughs> so anyway, let's, um, let's go back to, uh, back to the book of Revelation, back to that story that we were there at just now. These angels are uh, the, uh, in the test, uh, uh, um, cha Revelation chapter 15, from the reports of the angels in the temple of the tabernacle of testimony, God the Father has rendered judgment against the earth. And it says, out of verse 6 says, out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, having their chest girded with golden bands. Should be uh, linen, uh, you'll know linen when you see it. I just thought about this today. Uh, how did they make the linen? They had to grow it, and it's from plants. Is it from plants? I'm not sure where it comes from. But they had to make this up in heaven. So if it's plants, there's an agricultural sector in heaven and a manufacturing plant in heaven. This had to be caught, uh, grown, manufactured, pulled, then milled and stuff like that, and then weaved into clothing. So most likely right now, the angels are doing all of that. There are angels who are making the stuff, right? It doesn't just appear out of nowhere. God has processes in place, right? Earth mirrors heaven. So there are angels that are doing other work in heaven, angels that are doing maintenance work in heaven. Uh, there are you know, big angels, small angels, angels that are doing all sorts of things, right? Angels that run the elevators probably, you know, that kind of a thing. Having their chest girded with golden bands. Next one. One of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God who, fill, who lives forever and ever. Now, the living creatures here are the ones I was talking to you about earlier. These are the ones that look really, really strange. And we'll go to it, but let me just finish this chapter. We'll ex explain how these guys look, what they're doing, where they're standing. It says, the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Because no one could enter the temple, this means no atonement for sin can be made. That means now the judgment that's coming is full on judgment and the guys can't repent. The, that window has closed. That's crazy. That means because the temple, no one can enter, the people that are on the earth say, Lord, please save us. Or, uh, though the saints, they are, you know, they have the mark, they're on one side, but they also can't avoid judgment. This is why most of them will be tortured and martyred for their faith. There's also, because the temple is closed, there's no way to delay judgment because now timing is of the essence. Uh, and this is like, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. This is crazy. This is awesome. These living creatures are a type of angel that we see. Uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. Revelation chapter 4 explains them, which is what's happening here in the center. Uh, you can start in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. 
It says, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. The first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here and I will show you things that which must take place after this, right? One of, the, one of the prophecies for this year is actually the words come up here because this is the time when you need to ascend to the throne room of God. There, were, uh, there was a few, few guys who were prophesying. They were saying, and in fact, our church as well, we, uh, I think it was mom who prophesied this. She said, come up here. Now is the time that you come up here, come up to, 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 to the heavens, and now you're going to know about what's going to happen this year. Come up here. Things are going to be different. Things are going to change, right? Look at the next line. It says, immediately, I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven. The one sat, and one sat on the throne. In other words, now he's seeing in the Spirit. Previously, it was physical. He knew he was physical. Now he's having an out-of-body experience, right? So he is awake. He just knows he's not lucid. Now, I explain that to you. One day when this happens to you, you will understand what this means. Uh, I had something like this happen. It was crazy. Uh, but you will understand why they say I was in the body. I was in the body, but also out of the body. I'm not sure how this happens, how this works. But you are somewhere else, and you are 100% aware you are somebody somewhere else. And you can interact with that thing and that place, sometimes it's a different dimension. It's like a pocket reality. That's the best way to say it. Where things are uh, like real, but not really real. You're not entirely sure where you are, but it's like another world, another plane of existence has been created. Another pocket has been exist created for you to show something to you. Uh, and you can touch it and move things and do things, but also you're here on the earth and your body, you're well aware of your body on the earth and you can do things and move things, but that's, you're not actually affecting that directly in the way that you want. You don't want to be involved with this. You want to be involved here. And uh, one of the places you see this is with Peter. The Bible says Peter was caught up, ecstasis, that's the word, taken to another place, another realm, where he was shown the sheet coming down from heaven. So when the sheet came down from heaven, all the animals were in the sheet and God said, take, eat, you know, all these things. And Peter was like, no, it's unclean. And then the Bible says the, the vision re, rewound, rewound itself and replayed. That area, the, the Greek word is ecstasis. That means it was another reality. You are in a separate reality and you can change things, do things, and move things around to explain it. So uh, John the Revelator was on earth, experienced all the other things. Now he is taken up into a separate reality where he can see the things that are separate. That's why he says, come up here. People who are taken to heaven can be taken in two ways. You can be taken physically or you can be taken in a spiritual form. Most people are taken up in a spiritual form. And you can be taken up in a spiritual form any time that you request it. And that blows people's minds, but yes, it's possible. Uh, one pastor I was listening to recently, uh, she was explaining uh, that she was in a worship service and she didn't like what was happening. Uh, uh, she didn't really like the song or something like that. And then so she went up into heaven while she was there physically. And I think she was going to preach there or something like that, but she was, she was visiting. And she went up into a different reality and then she was able to uh, do certain things in heaven. And then she knew she, like, what was happening on the earth, but she wasn't present. She was somewhere else. And when the praise and worship on earth finished, she had to come back into a body but uh, it, like, she didn't really know what was happening because she didn't hear or see or really participate in anything physical. So uh, she had to like, <laughs> she had to like come back into her body and then go into the bathroom and then sort of like go like, Lord, uh, I'm not entirely sure what happened here and what's going on. So she had to come back out and then ask people around, what do I need to do? What, what happened here? And uh, get back up to speed and things like that. But uh, the, the essence of the story is, there's a lot more that happened in the story, but the essence of the story is you can be taken up when you want to be taken up. Or if you ask God to come up here, take me up, right? Uh, 
So he was in the spirit, verse 3 says, and he who sat there was like Jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow above the throne in appearance like an emerald. Uh, and uh, uh, there, there's, there's something really, really amazing uh, that you want to know about the presence of God. Everything that God touches that's earthly turns into sapphire. And it turns into a physical sapphire. And you may be thinking, how, how does this work? Well, one of the things we know about is the, the tablets, you know, the, the Ten Commandments. The, uh, the Jewish uh, uh, historians write that when the tablets were written with the finger of God, it was inlaid with sapphire. And they said the writing was in sapphire, but the rest of the thing was in stone. And the Bible speaks about as God walks, uh, everywhere he walks, sapphire appears as footsteps behind him, right? And his throne has also got sapphire in it, right? This is why I'm going to go the jasper and the cider stone in appearance. And, it also, and uh, it's also written in the Bible, and people who have had visions of heaven say that the sky in heaven is more of a sapphire blue than a light blue. It's a very different kind of a blue. So what's up with that? Well, here's the thing. When earthly stone is contacted with extreme levels of instant heat, it is purified. And if you purify earthly stones like that, almost immediately, whatever earthly stone is touched by that fire turns to sapphire. And NASA uses this to create sapphire crystals, sapphire things, to cover the um, space shuttles and stuff like that. So they treat the stones and create sapphire out of it to be used to coat the spacecrafts and things like that. That's how it was understood because no one really knew about this, but this is what happens. God is a consuming fire as he walks with his power, with his glory. It purifies the ground. After it's purified, we call it holy ground. I really thought people would like get that one. <laughs> Take off your shoes for it is holy ground. It is sapphire. When Moses was there, take off your sandals, it is sapphire. So the whole ground was like glass, light blue glass. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The glory of God makes anything that is common extraordinary because it takes regular stones, purifies it, turns to sapphire. And this is, the, this is the, the intense heat and the intense power that's coming out of God's throne. Uh, look at the next line says, around the throne, there were 24 thrones, uh, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their head. Now, it is believed that these are not angels. Because if it was angels, they probably would have said that they were angels. But the word used is just elders. And we know from the previous message that I said that there is a courts in heaven, and that they are angels whose job it is to give God advice. But these are not the same word, and these are not the same things, these are not the same people, these are elders. What, is, what these are believed to be is the 12 people on either side, they are the 12 apostles in the New Testament and the 12 elders in the Old Testament. And they sit on the throne on these thrones and they judge with the Father. They give judgment unto, unto them. Jesus alludes to this and he says, those of you who are saying that Moses told you to do this, Moses told you that, Moses will give testimony to God the Father against you. So these elders are sitting there and they will say, uh, based upon what they did on the earth, and based upon what the, uh, you know, what, uh, we, uh, what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did, what Peter, John, and, and, uh, uh, and the rest of the uh, apostles, what they did, what Paul did, they will say, I gave you a writing that said, do this, and you didn't do it. Or they'll say, uh, you know, uh, 
I'm not sure if King David is there, but I'm, he probably is, right? Because he's, he's a king of Israel. He's one of them. So he'll probably say like, well, I fought a lion and a bear and I didn't even have the whole scripture. So when you have this uh, dialogue with God, when you are there presenting your case in the beam of judgment and things like that, which is a reward ceremony, they will act according to, they will judge according to their own act in relation to your act. So this is what the thrones are about. These guys are pure. We know this because they would have died. We just learned that if, it, if the fire of God is instantly turning anything into sapphire, these guys have to be pure, otherwise they will be burned, right? Remember, the, the fire and everything is not a spiritual fire. All the stuff is physical. It's all real. Everything here is real. It's not a, 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 like a, a, there is symbolism, symbolism attached to it, but all the stuff is physical. It is real. You can touch it when you get to heaven or you can be burned by it. One of the two, right? They are clothed in white robes. Again, where did they get the robes from? And they had crowns of gold on their head. We know Jesus makes the houses, uh, but who makes the, the crowns and stuff like that, right? Certain people believe that Jesus is the one who makes the crown uh, because based upon your works, your works are given, which the Bible says they come as like scroll, as like books and stuff like that. And then they are put through the refiner's fire. And uh, people who have had visions of heaven say that these books that they come, they, uh, Jesus takes it and with his hands, whatever large amount of books that you did in your life, he goes like this, and then all the books like burn up instantly. And when he opens his hand, there's either gems inside or there's nothing inside. And all of your works, your good works that you did for Christ, turn into those gems. That's why it says the refining fire, it turns into gold and gemstones, the good work that you did. And apparently, they, uh, and I say apparently because I haven't done enough research on this, but they say apparently those same gold and gemstones is what's used to make your crown. So the work that you did, they take that and they make a crown that's bespoke to you with your amount of gems and your amount of people that you got saved. They make this crown and that's the crown that's given to you if you, uh, you know, based upon your works. So that's not something that's made by angels, the crown and the gemstones. That's created by you, but it's made by God, right? Look at the next one. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. This, this is very, very important. We know, we know the menorah that we have in the temple. It's got the seven, seven lamps, stuff like that. And then it says, yeah, there are seven spirits of God. Uh, another way of reading this, another way of translating this is the sevenfold spirit of God. And the sevenfold spirit of God is the Holy Spirit because he branches, he has different things that come out of him, right? If you look at the temple, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's three main elements. There's the, the, the altar, the I think it's the brazen altar, the fire altar inside. There's the table of showbread, and then there's the menorah, the lamps, right? Each of them represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father burns up the works, right? He's a consuming fire. Jesus is the bread of life, and the Holy Spirit is the flame of fire. This is a rep the earthly temple is a representation of what's happening up here. From the throne proceeded this lightning, thunderings, and voices. Uh, and, uh, and this is all crazy, amazing stuff that's happening up in heaven. Next line. Uh, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like, the, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures. This is the ones. These are the angels that carry that bowl that we just heard about with all of the judgment inside. It should be noted that this temple, the, 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 the throne room of God is currently opened. Not just in the vision here, but also right now, Jesus is over here in this area making intercession for you. All the stuff is happening over here and there's all different kinds of angels doing different things, but the throne room of God, the grace of God is opened now for anyone that wants to come. And it says, before the throne was like a sea of glass, like crystal, 
in the midst of the throne and around the throne. We're not entirely sure about the details of this thing, but I think it's beautiful anyway. These four living creatures, full of eyes in the front and in the back, right? Kind of creepy, these angels, right? Look at the next line. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like a calf. The third had the face of a man. The fourth had a flying eagle, right? So these are, there's four of them now. They have eyes all over their body. Uh, and uh, look at the next line. I believe it says that the, the following, each having six wings were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. These are the angels that are the closest to God. Uh, these, these angels, they, we have seraphims and other kinds of angels, but these kinds of angels are very special because they are the closest ones, as far as we know, in physical proximity to the glory of God. Now, let, let's, let's go back to, uh, uh, to, to, the, to the verse that's explaining what they look like, and I'm going to explain something, right? So go back, uh, go back two verses. These angels are a, a, perception, uh, are, are a symbol of Christians, or what Christians want. There we go. Uh, back one more, one more. Back to it. There we go, right? These angels have a, uh, uh, these angels are a symbol of what it takes to come close to the presence of God. The first thing you want to see is that uh, the angels have eyes in the front and in the back, but they also have eyes on the wings. So, why do they have eyes in the front and the back? Well, that one is simple, because we as Christians always need to keep our eyes on God. To be close to God, you need to have eyes on Him all the time. But you also need to have eyes in the front of your head so that you can watch and pray. To come close to God, you got to watch and pray, be ever looking what's happening outside, but also have eyes looking at God nonstop or if it's the other way around, I'm not sure if they're facing God or they are, they're facing the throne or facing the world. I'm going to assume that they're facing God. But they need to have eyes on the back of their head watching the earth, watching what's happening over there, but having their focus on Christ and the throne. Having their focus on what God wants for you, what you're supposed to be doing. Look at the next line. It then tells us one was like a lion, second was like a calf, the third one had a face of a man, the fourth one had like a flying eagle. Each of these animals represent a different personality type. They represent a different type of Christian. And they also represent different communication styles. Because you'll find among people these uh, 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 that, that uh, uh, not everyone talks the same way, not everyone does things the same way. You have kinesthetic people, you have excited people, people with a lot of energy inside them, you have introspective people, and you have people who are calculating, right? Uh, and you, when you learn communication, you'll actually learn that when you wanna speak to a group of people, you will always have all four types of people in the building. And so you need to speak in a way that gains the uh, appreciation or rather gains the attention of everybody. And if you do it in a wrong way, you will turn off certain people and turn on other people, or you will get a, you'll, or if you only attack the way that you want to do things your way, you'll only uh, communicate with your kind of people and miss the other three, three quarters. When you learn marketing, they'll also teach you the same thing, right? When you do speech and speech marketing. Basically, you have four levels of people who are excited, right? This is my own way of explaining it. There's more details about it, but you have people who are uh, very, very soft people, very quiet people, highly uh, introverted people. If you speak loudly to highly introverted people, they will get scared and they will get close, smaller, and speak less to you later on. They will regress more into the corner of their room that they were at, right? Highly introverted people. Those kinds of introverted people require, uh, when they give suggestions, 
they do it after giving a lot of thought because if their suggestion is not taken, they take it personally. Those kinds of people, we call them eagles. We call, uh, or, uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the gift that God gave those kinds of introspective people while they're eagles here is because they are always uh, uh, paying attention to the details. They're always paying attention to the small things, the little things, and it's a gift that God has given that you are able to identify when everything else is right, there's one thing wrong. And so they don't speak about other stuff. They don't do other things. They don't care about the big stuff. They're caring about small details. These are the kind of people that are, make watches and make jewelry and uh, they do art. And they're, they're, they're the ones who are like, it's one pixel too much to the left. And, you know, this color is just not right. Or the curtain is just not perfectly straight. They tend to be creative people and they tend to get really upset or sad when somebody doesn't like their ideas. They take, because they spend so much of effort working on it, it hurts them, right? That's, that's on the one side. On the far other side, you have lions. Lions are loud. <laughs> lions care about the big picture. They care about the majority of the people. And they also care about making sure everybody heard them. They roar, right? If somebody doesn't like what a lion says, that's your problem, not mine. They will, sh they, and they don't, they, don't, they don't care what other people think. They literally, they will, they will eat you. If, 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 it, if, it, if they could, they would, right? If you don't like their idea, I'm doing it anyway. Because <laughs> a lion does what a lion does. A lion roars. The benefit of their gift is that lions are bold and lions tend to be prophets, lions tend to be apostles because they can't be suppressed. So they have on the other side, we, we, on the energy scale, we have a plus four, right? They are loud, they are great, they are uh, in a way that they are brash. The problem with lions or the lion, lion personality is that they can hurt people without knowing because they just told the truth. They have no problem telling the truth, but they need to speak it in a gentle manner. Compared to the eagle, which is at the bottom, their problem is with the same eye of, uh, the, the eye of, of intricacy, or the eye of detail. If they focus that same eye on themselves, they will suddenly realize that they have lots of problems, just like everybody has lots of problems. When the eagle eye is turned on yourself, you suddenly become self-critical, which is why a lot of introverted people are depressed because they're always thinking about themselves. So that same eye that's used outside to clear things is focused on themselves. This is why the strength, greatest strength is also the greatest weakness. Same thing with the lion, right? The next one is the calf. That's the one that does hard work when nobody's looking. A calf, calves are like, like if you think about oxen, oxen are always hard working. They are gentle people, strong and silent type. On the scale of, of, uh, of, of, of things, they are the second biggest after the lions. The lions are the strongest one, the calf is the second one. They will only speak up if they see something wrong, but they are often very humble people. They are often people who are, uh, uh, they can take some criticism, it's okay, it's not really a problem, but they won't really speak up unless somebody is getting hurt. Right? Everything will be fine. Trust the system. The problem with the calf is, uh, with that same gift, is that the same dedication can be used as stubbornness. The only difference between being in faith and being stubborn is the direction you're going in. So when a calf is going in the wrong direction, they can be stubborn. But when a calf is going in the right direction, it'll be in faith. No one will be able to stop them. The third kind of people is you get the man. Men are... Uh, very basic, very, very simple. Men have flaws, but men speak well. So they're not, ex they're not hyper detailed. They're sort of like right in the middle where they're not an extrovert. They're not an introvert. They're just like whatever that is in the center, hyper balanced. They're the type of people where if something goes wrong, they think that they need to fix something and they're not entirely sure how to fix it. They need to gain wisdom about it. So they spend time calculating. While the eagle is always looking and e e examining, the man is calculating. The man is trying to figure things out and they are often types of engineers 
where they are building systems instead of building something that's dedicated. They build something that's unique. They're not loud, they're not brash, they don't have the strength of a lion, they don't have the dedication of an ox, but they are the person who will figure something out. The problem with a man uh, in this case is that if it doesn't work, they tend to quit because they'll just try and find a new solution, which gets, in the, ang which gets the ire of the people who are like calves, who are hyper-dedicated to following through. People who are a man like, we'll just find another solution. And the calf is like, but we went halfway, right? We did it so long, let's just finish it. It may take us all night, but we'll finish it. And then the guy is like, no, no, no. We need to solve, we need a better solution because it's gonna take too much time. And then the person who's pretty quiet will say like, you guys forgot about this thing. And then the lion person will shout at them and say like, we already know about this. And then you'll shout and you start to get the order back. Lions tend to be the leaders. The calves tend to be managers. Men tend to be engineers and the, and the eagle-eyed person tend to be people who are looking at the details. They're the finishers. So you have the different groups of people here. The starters, the continuers, the finishers, and the quitters. Everybody's all together, all the speaking techniques and everything inside there, right? So you'll learn that when you want to do speaking, you have to start slowly and softly to, get, to gain the appreciation of people who are soft and quiet. Because if you start something really loud and brash, like a rock show, the people who are introverted will be like, I'm not supposed to be here because these people are crazy. But if you start slowly, the people who are loud and brash don't even know that you started. But they don't leave. That's the difference. And then you've got to slowly come up, then you've got to greet people and then invite them. Right? You can see the difference between characters here. A lion will invite himself. An eagle will wait for an invitation. The man will say like, uh, you know, was I supposed to be here? And the calf will check his calendar to see whether he was supposed to be there or not. Everybody has their different personality. All four personalities are here. And they are all close to the throne of God. So one of the ways that you can see it, and you can read this passage, and that we learn this from, from the types of angels that are close to the kingdom of God, uh, to the throne of God, is that all kinds of people are before the throne of God. All kinds of people can approach God with their relevant gift, and all kinds of people have gifts, and they have uh, strengths, and they have weaknesses. But we learn that we need to be close to Him. Look at the next line, right? That's what we learn from these types of angels that are right next to Him. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, I explained from the other angels, not these ones, the other ones, that the reason they have six wings is to cover the bodies, right? Two, two wings to fly with, two wings to cover the body, two wings to cover the feet, because they need to be holy and not bring dirt or any, anything unholy to the presence of God, so it covers everything, right? And they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come, right? You guys know the songs. <laughs> Amen. Whenever a living creature gives glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before him who sit at the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their thrones before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by you they will exist and were created. So these angels are giving glory to God all the time. And whenever they sing the song, the 24 elders suddenly have a new revelation of God. Because see, it says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by you they will exist and were created. Every time the angels give glory to God, God reveals another side of his personality. And all the people who are there for like eternity, the 24 elders get this connection with God and they get a new, new profound fear of God. These angels, the, or these, the, these angels, the living creatures, they exist primarily for the fear of God, not the love of God. They exist to show God's glory and to show His grace and it stokes the people nearby to worship God. When angels worship God, 
people get a new revelation of God's glory. That's the next point. When we worship God, you'll often say, you, you know, we have a song that says like, we heard angels sing right with us. When people hear angels sing with them, they get excited and they want to sing and praise more. That's what happens to you. So the angels will help you worship God. And you can ask them to sing with you and to help you worship God. Amen. That's crazy. Now, I'm not going to go into any more of the, the stuff that we have today. I was actually going to explain uh, about... Thank you, Jesus. I was actually going to explain one more uh, uh, topic about Peter when he explains about angels and their speech, the way angels talk. Angels have a way of dialect, and Peter speaks about it. We'll go through it next week because God wanted to do something he wanted to do in the beginning of the night. So we'll, we'll, we won't go to get to that. But the point that you need to take home tonight is you can ask angels to help you worship God. You've run out of things to say. You run out of things to songs to sing. You don't know what to do, what to say. You, as any kind of person, whether you're a soft person or a loud person or something in between, you can connect with God. And you can say, Lord, send me your angels to help me worship or worship with me. And you can say, the angels circle the throne and say, holy, holy, holy are, are the Lord, is the Lord God Almighty. And the heavens will open. These angels will help you grow and connect with God. Amen. Catherine, you can close in prayer. A lot of people got healed and saved in the beginning of the <laughs> night. Amen. <laughs> can we all stand? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Here's the mic. Here's the mic. Right. Mm. Can we all stand? We're going to close in prayer, but before we mm. do, I want to encourage everyone. We had so many amazing words of knowledge. Mm. Words of knowledge just means that God is he's unveiling a condition so that he can heal it. We say what God reveals, he heals. So if you've received your miracle during the service today, whether um, online or on campus, please can you send us a message to our office? We actually have a shortcut there on the website, silvermodley.com forward slash praise. And you can go ahead, go there, and uh, on the front page, actually, you can send us your praise report. Mm. And, you know, we learned that as you give glory to God, God mm. says, I can trust you to give glory to me. So he starts giving you more miracles to testify about. Amen. So if you want to be one of those people, please contact our offices because we want to give God all the glory. Mm. Amen. Amen. Are you guys going to do it? Who received a miracle tonight? <laughs> the delayed reaction right here. Okay, I saw everyone online. It's like, yes. <laughs> All right. Let me try that again. Who received their miracle tonight? Amen? Amen. All right. Let's, um, we're going to do the salvation prayer first. So if you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, you know, it's absolutely amazing because one day we get to be with Jesus in heaven. Amen. And if you want to receive that, if you want to experience that, if you want to be sure of your salvation or rededicate your life to him, I want you to also pray along with me tonight. Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord of my life and my savior. I believe you sent him to die on the cross for me. He took my sin. He took my shame. He took every addiction. Everything that happened after the fall, every problem, you took it to the cross. I believe Jesus was dead and buried. And three days later, he rose again so that I can rise again, so that I can receive a new life. Lord, make yourself real to me and write my name in the Lamb's book of life in the courts of heaven. Fill me with your spirit. Lead me and guide me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So welcome to the family of God. Amen. So please contact our offices again. Let us know. We want to pray for you and give you some free resources. So if you want to know uh, the Lamb's Book of Life, 
the Bible says that God has a list of all the people who are going to heaven. He has a list there and he, will, he writes his, your name in the book of life. We call it the Lamb's book of life. So when you come to heaven, God says, your name is here. Amen. So that's really, really cool. Amen. So we're also going to close tonight's service in prayer. Can I get an amen from everyone? Amen. amen. Yeah. This guys are very quiet. <laughs> But let's close tonight's service in prayer as well. Lord God, I come before in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for teaching us, God, about the angels, God, about our heavenly help, Lord, and about, God, the angels, Lord, that you've created. I thank you, Lord, that all of creation, including the angels, Lord, reveal and unveil you, our heavenly Father. God, your word says that all of creation, it shows your characteristics. It's showing us, God, your glory, your holiness, Lord God. It's also showing us your grace, Lord. Lord God, your detail, Lord God. Lord God, your heart, Lord God. Your love, Lord God. Lord, we see that, Lord God, you have mimicked yourself, Lord, in our lives, God, because you are the line of Judah, Lord. You are the one, Lord God, who sees all, Lord God, from the finest detail, Lord, to the biggest detail, Lord God. You're also the one, Lord God, who loves people, Lord God. You sent your son to die for us because you love us. I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you are also humble, Lord God. You humbled yourself. And, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, well, Lord God, speaking to us and sharing with us, God, this amazing service. Thank you, Lord, for every single person, God, who joined us online. Lord God, who are hungry for you, Lord, and received from your hand. And I thank you, God, even for those whose miracles, Lord God, weren't called out, God. I thank you, Lord, that you still know them, Lord. And that, God, when they pray, Lord God, in faith, your word says you answer them. Thank you, God, for all the amazing testimonies and miracles, Lord, that are coming through, Lord God. I cover every single person, Lord, who has joined us tonight, both online and on campus, God, with your blood. And, Lord God, those also join us after the live stream, Lord. We cover them in your blood as well. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that your blessing rests upon us, God. Lord, I ask right now that you send your angels to give to guard and protect us as we go to our homes or to wherever we need to go. I thank you. Our vehicles are covered in your blood, Lord God. And we give you praise, glory, and honor, Lord God, for a victorious week ahead, Lord. A week, Lord God, full of your presence, your power, your glory, Lord, and revelation, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor, Lord, for what you'll do this Friday as well. In Jesus' mighty name, I give you praise, Lord. Thank you, God, for teaching us your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you. We worship you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to do the Lord's, um, the Aaronic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And we'll see you on Friday night right here at the Miracle Center for Intercession. God bless.